Hi, Rich Pickett. I feel like a kid in a candy store. I've got an amazing opportunity here. I decided to get my Cirrus Vision Jet type rating. Really cool jet. It's my ninth type rating. I thought, what the heck, just learn to fly another jet. I also fly the best single engine jet out there. Oh, I don't know, L39 is pretty nice. I like flying that. <laughs> and uh, probably the F-16 is pretty cool too. But anyway, let's talk about this. So this is a procedure trainer. It's really good. It, I've used it for some of my training. So I'm trying to get familiar with it. It's not exactly like the airplane, but it's pretty cool. It gives you some nice things. So we're going to go through some of the features of it. First, I'm going to just talk about the basic architecture of it. So we have three Garmin touch controllers, GTC 1, 2, and 3. They're in landscape mode, which is quite different than other implementations where they're, they're vertical. I like this. gives you a lot more legroom. This is not where it is in the airplane. This is an autopilot controller. Obviously, we got the whole other part of the aircraft around. The display backup button here is a toggle switch, which is different in the airplane. This is also doesn't have a dedicated checklist button, but it's really cool. And then we have two displays, and um, physically, they look identical. But this is our PFD, and that's our MFD. So what I've done now is I position this to my home airport, which is a Montgomery Gibbs Airport in San Diego, Kilo, Mike, Yankee, Foxtrot. And I've uh, set up this uh, demo so that it's right on uh, 2 8 right, right in the um, extended area and through here. So now what I'm doing is I've just gone through some part of the checklist. I'm just going to show you some features, not everything. Um, it takes hours to be able to do that, but I'm going to go through at least some of the components. So right now in this, I have these panes. And to give you a little bit of idea, you see this button here. This outer button takes me to the pane that this GTC is controlling. So here I've got the right pane on the PFD. That's the full pane on the MFD. And we'll show you how to mess around with a little bit of that. Like, so here I come here, right? And so here I can hit this button here, it's full, and it will make it the full, which is a really cool view. It's really neat, especially in emergencies or you want a full, big scale. But right now, let's do a split here so we can have that. So I'm splitting, it brings me back to the checklist where I was. It's awesome. So now, as we're going through here, we're gonna do it through the checklist. And uh, normally we have a button on the G2s, but in through here, I'm just gonna select it. And I oops, gotta go back to the right pane. This tells me which pane I'm on. Of course, the cyan, right? So now I'm gonna come here. Pre flight is as complete. Cap spin removed and stowed. Battery one and two we turned on. External GPU uh, doesn't really matter for us right now, but let's see what we have. Nope, we're running it all on on uh, Bat two right now. So we got 28.3. And actually, engines are running, which is pretty cool. So we've got that done. Uh, Let's come back up here to this one. So the avionics initialization. So that goes through a way to be able to check systems. So what we're going to do here is we're going to come up utilities. See, this has information here on various things. So trip stats, minimums, trip planning, schedule message. And it's also where you find initialization. So if I select that, then it has all these things that I have to check. Part of my checklist. It works great. Database status. Yep, those are the databases. Of course, what we've got in those is older ones. No safety information. This is where we would see the safety information loaded. So let's say we got that. So now we do a pre-flight test of systems. Very simple. On other G3000 systems, like I fly in the M2s and in the CJ3+, Plus, there's more systems. So you just touch it, pre-flight test. You'll see more systems here. Engine fire, checking it. Stall warning system, checking it. Oxygen system, checking it. After it does the stall warning system. Bingo, done. So I go to the next. So initialize fuel so I can sync the fuel. So the whole idea here is make this fuel agree with, agree with this one. That shows 210. That shows 186. Let's see on the, oh, 347. Wow, it's more fuel than we've got here. Of course, this is a demo system, but um, so <laughs> that's a little bit high. Uh, and I think we can change one. Well, let's just have that match. 210. We'll figure out how to match it. Bingo, got that. So we go to the next. Of course, this is a demo. It's just a, uh, the procedure trainer, so it's going to have some different systems. So that's our empty weight. Here we could go out aircraft loading. Let's say we have a pilot and co-pilot. Fuel, it already knows what our fuel is, fuel reserve, holds, etc. And so now we said, bingo, we've got that done. So that's a system initialization, at least on this portion of the checklist. Pretty cool. So now we come up back here. So let's come back here, here, and let's go. We've got that and that info. We've already done that. That one, of course, we don't have some of that information. So now let's go to our flight plan. We have to do our flight plan, but I loaded one earlier. This is a short one from Kilo Mike Yankee Foxtrot to uh, 
Carlsbad Palmar Airport, just north of us, uh, Charlie Romeo, Quebec. And then we have the, the, the data. So we can come here. That's the runway takeoff distance. So let's come to this second pane in here and let's take that system off here. And then um, right in here, we're gonna come over on that right pane and actually put some of the information we have. So let's come up here and let's put our aircraft systems. So here's our status and info. So in here, normally you could have that set up. If you didn't have that pane set up to the aircraft status, it's a good idea to get it all set. So let's see, what the heck, why do we need that? Well, because it computes information for us. So it says takeoff distance ground is 1648 and the distance over a 50 foot obstacle is 2319. So we really wanna use the 2319, that's the, that's the safest. So we're gonna come back here and the plane is a little bit organized, a little bit differently. Uh, we're gonna come here, we go to the initialization, we come down through here and we said, okay, flight plan, takeoff data, we now have that set. So that shows us our data and we're gonna accept the initialization. Of course, it says we had to confirm it because we don't have a couple things in this demo system, but it gives us an idea of how we've got everything set up. So now I'm gonna come back over here and uh, let's come over to that pane. Took me out of the checklist for some reason. Um, I'm going to come here, go to utility. Oops, sorry. Back here. Checklist. So we've got that done. Passengers brief. Hey, passengers, this whole briefing process. In fact, uh, we have uh, Cirrus has provided a really cool video for, for briefing passengers. So we go through and tell them about emergency egress, the main door, the emergency door, oxygen if they have to, to use their seat belts, no smoking, things like that. Uh, it's a very good briefing, very complete briefing. So we briefed them, let's say we briefed them, right? The door is latched, seatbelts are secured, parking brake as required. So we go to our next checklist. Strobe lights, click, click, turn them on. Cast messages, we have all these guys, but of course this is the demo system, so all those cast messages wouldn't be there. Thrust lever to idle, uh, fuel control switch um, to left, so it verifies things working. I'm gonna come down through this. It's a little bit different, especially this is a G1. The G2 is quite different, much simpler. Um, so we come down through here. Um, then we come down, so this, I'm gonna run through these because they're, the new checklists are a little different. Hold the brakes, of course. Even if you have parking brakes, I always hold them just to be case. ECS disable, we wanna verify the, the light is lit. Basically, it's turning off some of the bleed air components as you start the engine, which is pretty cool. Air compressor, verify that off before we start. We put the engine knob to run. And the little knob on the go click. Couldn't be simpler. Um, we can hear the fuel pump. So you can hear the fuel pump turning as it turns. And then we'll also see fuel pump over here in this mode. And then we go through this. Verifier engine start voltage cast is not shown here. And then we press this momentary button just above the the off run switch and you just press it to get started. These will monitor as we come up, all right? As you do a start, we've already got the engine started in this demo, but you will go through here and you'll see oil pressure, you'll see N2% uh, N2 rise, and then above 8% um, fuel and igniters are activated. The ITT will start rising, that's the inner turbine temperature, and basically that means the fire in the can, right? So that's gonna start rising. Oil pressure will come up as the RPM, and then you want to be able to get, you should be able to have N1 by about 16% of N2. Now, if you have other anomalies, the FADIC will stop the engine on some, but not all, like a hung start. A hung start might be, it starts rotating, and it just doesn't accelerate past 30. It could be a weak battery, high altitude, etc. So in that case, we go through the checklist and, and shut down the engine and monitor and do other things. So then we come down here, and uh, this is an older checklist. Now you turn Gen 1s on earlier. So we have the Gen 1s on, got this all lit. Gen 1s on, EIS check all normal, make sure that's okay, engine IPS as required. If it was coal out there, invisible moisture, and visibility less than a, a mile, but even visible moisture if it's raining. As we come down through here and it's five degrees or colder, we flip on the, the engine and ice. Now, you have to make sure it's turned off by 10. So if it's seven or eight, personally I turn it on, but follow the checklist. Just make sure it's off by 10. Uh, bleed switch, click, we turn it, bleed switch on, 
ECS control panel over here. We'll turn that on. Got that set. External GPU disconnect. We'll verify it's disconnected in here. Air conditioner compressor we turn on. It's a little different on the makes it a little bit easier on the new on the G2 and beyond. And then we have the taxi, right? We come down through here, comms and amps, if we want to set those and which radios. Of course, we can pick which radio here, one or two. I use two for all the ground, in my case, and EDIS, and I use one for flight. Altimeter is set, so we check that set. Okay, we check our altimeter, make sure that's all set through there, and also test, test that standby. So we're going to show you that standby. It's really cool. Like, where the heck is the standby, right? Bingo, GTC1. So that's the standby. It's really cool, very clever. This does double duty. It's very smart. Um, designed by Garmin and Cirrus. So we come down to there. We've got that set. Um, we've got that set. Let's come down here. Altimeter set, transponder set. Set the transponder. We just come here. And let's say it's two, three, four, five, right? Enter. That's our transponder. Pretty easy to do. We've got our clearance. Heading in initial altitude, I can just go like this, set it where it is. Our initial altitude right now is, it's, I've got the sync for this demo, so it's going to line up, which is pretty cool. And that's our runway heading, so it's, it works out well. A master oxygen, of verify on, go psst. And then in here, of course, when we came in our pre-flight, we would have verified that we had at least 1575 of oxygen over there. Um, so we've got that set, no problem. Got that set, trim and flap set. Toga button pressed. I actually just approximated the toga button right here today. So I just have that set in here. Gens, um, uh, we want to check the uh, voltages, turn these things on and off. This is on the older checklist. It's a little bit different now. Bat 2, I'm going to just go through all these guys. Seat bells, parking brakes. Okay, before taxi. And then this is our takeoff. So before we do that, let's... I want to show you some cool features over here on the MFD. I just think this is such a nice interface that Garmin and Cirrus Course did for this implementation. So I've moved over to this second pane, right? Second here, which means this one here um, on the left. I can make that full, right? So there's my map. And that comes in really handy. I can zoom in and you get the safe taxi in here, right? So you can see the safe taxi. It's a very, very reliable system to be able to use for taxi. Let's bring it back. Over on the right, again, I'm moving that outer knob here to show that, that next pane over here. That's sort of the status. So I say, well, gee, that's cool. What systems are there? Well, I go to the aircraft. Let's come back here and show this. I go to aircraft systems here, right? Click on it. Oh, let's see what the engine and fuel go. Cool. Isn't that neat? It shows you schematics. Really cool. It's like what they did in the e Eclipse. is really strong on schematics. One of the first planes that jets that came up with that that much detail on their um, avionic system so here and we can see their fuel pumps off it shows the status of all those things electrical power look at that shows the entire bus shows our two gens in through here now generator two is actually an alternator so gen one is 270 amps gen two is actually an alternator uh, that's 72 amps and it's rectified internally to provide DC voltage, so that's why they call it Gen 2. It just makes it a little bit easier. You got two batteries in the new uh, G2s. It is lithium adder, uh, lithium ion from mid-continent, 17 amp. So it shows you your buses. So it's really cool schematic. You want what happens if I lose X? You'll exactly see what happens, right? So if we lost this portion and you were running everything just on bat two, you lost your engine, battery's dead, etc. You would still be able to run the forward uh, Emer bus. So ice protection, so schematic, see, these are off because we don't have any of that running. If we were to turn on the um, engine anti-ice, IPS as it's called, ice protection system, then that would tell us if we were to activate boots, those would go green. So landing gear, hey, it's good to stand. down. <laughs> of course we know here, but here it shows us this entire system of that. So it's really cool. Shows us where the little hydraulic pump is. Um, and then landing field elevation, of course, we have that already set. And then any maintenance is something else. So, envi oh, environment pressure. That shows our environmental system. Also gives us a, a nice idea here. If you want to zoom in, and it shows the environmentals. So in through there, bleed valve closed, bleed pressure, ground fans, etc. So that shows you the systems. Okay, so we got that, so let's come home.
let's say over on that, we'd like a chart. What kind of chart would you like? Bingo. What about the taxi chart, right? We can also put it over here, but let's say we have it over there for now. So right now, now we do the before landing checklist, and now we have to move the pane over, pane selector here. So now it's here. So we've got this, um, and then let's see, you got departure briefing. We're going to depart runway 28 right, straight out departure, to th runway heading to 3000. Just to give you an idea how we're going to run this, right? Landing lights as required, pro P on. We're going to do that in a minute. So now let's come back to the flight plan. So let's come back here. So look at the flight plan. I made a real simple flight plan. I could have put in, let's say the pod, just for grins, even though we wouldn't do that up to Carlsbad. I could even put in a procedure and say, let's do the departure procedure. Let's see, do the seaward two. And the transition is going to be the, the seal beach transition. Wow. Isn't that fast? Boom. And I'm going like, well, what does it look like? Well, I'd like to see what it looks like. You can come here and you say show on chart. And you notice since I'm cyan, that's indicate that's me, that's where it's going to show up. Isn't that cool? So I can look at that. And there's a real common departure I use when I'm flying jets out of, out of Montgomery, uh, Citations, Premier, et cetera, is that uh, even the vision is that we come through there and we have that. So that's pretty cool. So if I say no, what I really like to do is you know, show it on a map. Show it on a map view. And if I had it over in that pane, it would show it there. So really cool, nice capability. So let's say we're going to just load that just for grins. All right. And then we'll bring back to our checklist. Isn't that nice? So easy to be able to do. Of course, if we were really prepared, we'd have all this kind of loaded, maybe stored as a route and so forth, and then come back and play and do all the starts, make life easier. But now that we have that set, and then let's say that we're going to come here and actually... We're not going to go that whole route, but we're going to add a waypoint, and we're going to add Oceanside, O-C, and, oops, O, let me back up, O-C-N-V-O-R. Bingo, so I've got that one. Actually, after departure, the routing is usually, if I'm going to go to Carlsbad, going to be radar vectors, direct Oceanside. So what I'm going to do is come to Oceanside, direct, preload that, so I'm done. So I've got that done. It actually shows me here. So now I can just know that when I hit direct, it's going to go to Oceanside and we've got it all set. So that's cool. So I've got that all set. We'd normally take off flaps 50. So I don't have flaps here on there. Um, so we have all this thing set in here. We got our trim sets off just a little bit. We check all of our gauges. So now what do we want to take off? Come here. Oops, I uh, got to go right Yeah, Let's see if I'm going to checklist. Should have done my checklist. Oh, make sure I did my checklist. Uh, back. See if it's active. There it goes. Didn't press it hard enough. Engine IPS we don't need. It's 14 degrees. IPS we don't need for the wings off. And you can't depart with it on anyway for the boots. CAS messages. We have a whole bunch, but normally you wouldn't have anything. Multifunction windows configured the way you have it. So I'm, um, I think I'm going to come here, and I think I'm going to make that a full chart in there. Right? So, and I'm going to zoom that out a little bit. Because right? I want to be able to get a better situational awareness when I take off. And I'll put flight plan in, in here when I'm done. All right, so we come back here to that pane. Um, multifunction is configured. Okay, caution, be careful. Um, there we go. Those are inoperable, doesn't work. We're on FADEC channel A, which is important to verify. And it says, ooh, got to wait till oil temperature is above 10. You always have to do that C. It's just too darn cold for the plane, for the engine. Okay, so we've got that. Let's see if I did this. Did I do this right? Let me make sure. Oh, t my mistake. This just come here. This, I changed this to COM. So let me come back out of that. Oh, that's cool. I haven't hit that one before, so I have to figure out how to do that. So I turn that off. I'm going to come back to the home. Cool. I press that button and got to the com on this one by mistake. There we go. Bingo. Okay, cool. So I brought it back. So I pressed our, this button here to get me nav com. Turn that into a tuner. So I'm still learning. Go down all my sim sessions ago, so this is a good way for me to learn at the same time. So you'll probably see me make some errors. Oops, okay, got that. All right, so that's a normal takeoff. Lights went out, been in here. 
All right, so we've got that. So it's a good way for me to do it. So I've got that set. Thrust level will set. We'll go engine, VR, climb, landing gear, pause, run, climb up. Okay, so that's cool. So this is just a procedure trainer in here. This isn't going to be able to give me everything. I can come in through here and I can say, okay, we're heading and we're going to do a, a vertical speed, let's say, of uh, 1,000 feet per minute there and we're going to change our airspeed to um, instead of let's climb we'll, we're going to accelerate to, to uh, let's say we're going to actually slip to 160. let's see how that works okay now we go boom took off well that was fast wasn't it Whew. Whew. real fast takeoff so we're gonna bring this down i'm gonna put make sure i'm in heading mode um gear up zzz, right positive rate climb gear up at 115 you do flaps up Says, hey, probably didn't like that. I was climbing too fast. Um, so now I'm flying along, right? It's really cool. I can come over here and I can zoom this, see where I'm going, right? I'm already at 160. Now I said, hey, let's go direct. Press the direct to here or fly plan. So I already know I have Oceanside loaded. That's the advantage of already having that loaded. And I can just press nav. All right. So now it's going to turn that. So if you already know your first waypoint that you can go direct to, if you have that loaded in here, just direct gone. If you forgot to, you can go direct, or you can go flight plan, find the, the waypoint you want, and go. So it's pretty cool. So there it is to Carlsbad. They were tooling along, la, 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 la. So, yeah, well, geez, SoCal. Vision Jet uh, 123 Alpha Bravo. That's my call sign. Um, we're up, we're ready to rock. We're at 3,000, we're at 2,500 now because I think I may have put it there. Oh, the altitude there, it's climbed. Oh, let's do a uh, vertical speed. We didn't climb all the way in the demo, so let's go a little bit higher here. I lowered that down just a little too much in my demo box. So now we're climbing, we're doing 160. I'm gonna sink the heading bug. Um, as we're flying along, we say, geez, we know we're gonna do the, um, Let's say the Arnav Yankee 24 into Palomar. So we say, okay, and we've done the climb. Let's check our climb checklist. Um, bingo. Okay, we got this. Uh, make sure we got a checklist. Got that. And we'll go back here, playing around with the buttons. Bing, 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 bing. Oops. Hey, I didn't check what pane I'm in. See, that brought that. So I want that back. So that's something you really got to check on to be able to do it. Um, so we've got this, so I'm over here, and I'm gonna press this, 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 and this. All right, got this set. Thrust level is required. Okay, all right, so now, it's a good thing to just keep on that, that checklist, if you wanna be able to do it. So now, we got, now we're going to Palomar. La, 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 la. So now, let's come over here. Again, gotta make sure which pain you're on. I didn't check, it's a cool safety tip. And I'm just going to make that full right now, right? So that, and that gives me an idea of what we're going to go. Now, I know we're going to do that Yankee 2-4. So I'm going to come procedure, approach, Carlsbad, approach. Come up here and do Yankee 2-4, which is this puppy. And let's just do vectors. The minimums, I know what the minimums are, 523, roughly. So I've got that, and we're going to uh, just load it right now because we're not going to go anywhere yet, right? And I could also preview it if I wanted to, also to be able to set that. So now over here, let's say while I'm flying along, I'm going to look at the, the chart. I come here, go charts. Already knows, hey, pilot, you loaded the GPS Yankee 2-4, so why don't we just go ahead and just have it? I'll pop it up there for you. So bingo, got it. Oh, it's, oh, 528. Darn, I made a mistake. So how did I make the mistake? Well, you come here, and I can change it. Oh, it's 528. 528. So simple to do it. So simple. You always want to load your approach, right? You want to load your approach. Then you want to bug it. You want to make sure you brief it um, and get all those things done. Also, I always make sure that if I'm doing localizer, if you are, um, or ILS that the frequencies are correct for those ground-based NAVs. <clears throat> so and in here, I know the ATIS up there is 120.15, SoCal will be on 127.3, so let's say 1273 for Grins is there, and um, 118, 
uh, six is going to, we're just going to leave that for the tower right now. So we've got our eight is blah, 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 blah. We've got Palomar, uh, tower, ground 121.8, and come down here, of course, and put 121.8 down here if we want, 1218, and actually transfer that. And then if we want to put here, we can put 12015. Of course, we don't even have to put the one there and have those frequencies if we want to. So that's their ATIS, and that's the ground. So now we're cruising along, coming along the beautiful coast. Oh, I saw a whale. Do you see a whale? I saw him just, just like that. Big humpback just came out. You missed it. Sorry, you have to back up the video and look at it. Oh, there's dolphin pods, dolphin pods. Eh, yeah. Sorry, sometimes that's what we have to deal with when we're out in SoCal off the coast. So here we're cruising along here. Now we're, what we're going to do here is this is the approach. So we need to head that way. So I'm going to say, hey, we're going to go over heading over here. And um, they'll probably give us somewhere right around there. We're going pretty fast right now, but we're just going to get so we can get through this, this um, procedure here. And let's turn a little bit more, probably almost paralleling it now. So let's see, we're going to go over this way. We want to look so Jujik, Zuax, Jabal is 3100. So that's the final approach fix. So I always try to remember the altitude for the final approach fix. We're a little bit low that, 3100. So we could actually climb a little bit, let's see, because they actually get, usually give us somewhere around there, 36. And then let's climb. Okay, so we're cruising along. It's really nice. While you're doing it, you can go through the checklist and make sure you haven't forgotten anything. So there's our descent checklist, right? Landing field elevation. It's really close, 331. Ice protection, altimeter if we had seat and seat belts. Okay, approach briefing, we did that. We're gonna land runway two for the uh, GPS Yankee approach. If we have to go missed, we're gonna go straight out and follow the published miss and we'll bring it up again. Or a lot of times here, if I'm doing multiple approaches, they'll say um, modified uh, missed approach procedures after departure, turn left once, uh, 180 and climb to 3000. All right, airspeed 140 knots. We're going to slow down as we get closer, but right now we're just going to try to speed up a few things here. We'll get beyond. And then over here, of course, I can come to this pane here, and I say, awesome. I also want to have the, um, I'm going to split that, and over on that side, I want to make sure that those chart selection, and we're going to go arrival, approach, and oh, not that airport, right? We want to go K C R Q. You can, there's other ways to get that too, but I'm just going to type it in here. Okay. And we're going to do the Yankee tour. It's nice. Sometimes you can put your alternate up there. If you want to have your alternate, if you think the weather's really bad, at least you have one chart up there. And then over here, you could do just your primary airport, rail airport. So we're cruising along. And outside of Jabal. So we want to go out here a little bit. Then we're turning. We're going to have us. SoCal's going to have us turn just a little bit, a few degrees to the left. Oh, we got some people. Hopefully they're not in their way. You know, slam into us. Nice view here. Some people will not use this and just do everything here, which in through here, um, it has 23. It's obviously off there because we still have 210. <laughs> um, but in through there, we're burning 66 gallons an hour. Um, they won't use that chart. They'll just put it on this map here because it's enough information. Um, they don't think they think clutters things up. I don't mind it. It doesn't clutter it for me to have all that all that data up. So we're actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to speed us up just a little bit. I'm going to accelerate. We're going to get a little bit farther, and they'll turn around. So a sim trick. We're outside of class Bravo. We're outside of class Delta. So we can go up to 250 if we wanted to, but of course it makes it too hard for us to do that. So now we're gonna come back. So Jabal is here, right? I'm gonna go just a little farther and then we're gonna start our turn and box it back around here. Okay, now we're gonna descend to 3300, vertical speed. And as they turn, I'm gonna slow the plane down too. And cool, you can see the trend indicator, right? So you can see that, which is really cool. It gives me an idea of where the plane's gonna be in about six seconds. So it gives me an idea to kind of plan for this. And I'm gonna slow us down now to 150 just for now. It should be about 140, but I'm just gonna slow it down 150. 
Right about here, I would have 50% flaps, just my standard at every airplane I fly. Actually, when I'm about eight miles, eight to 10 miles from the final approach fix, I make sure I'm at approach flap speed and I have the first notch of flaps. In. Okay, so now let's look at what, geez, we had that, but we're still on Oceanside. Of course, what we need to do, right? You probably saw it, right? We need to do vectors to final and activate that, right? So you can get complacent. You can see your flight plan. You're flying along. You see all those things. Oh, it's not magenta. It's not what we want. So now we've got that set. So we're coming along here. Turn a little bit. Again, that, that arc will tell us where we'll be in about six seconds. Crank it around here. Just about here. Controllers do, do a much better job of vectoring pilots than I do. I'm going to plan it just right about there for right now. So the minute they gave us that heading change, well, actually, I did the heading, right? The minute you know you're going off that course, no longer direct ocean side, for example, once you verify that they're not going to take you back there, then go ahead and activate the next leg of your flight plan, extend it, or vectors to final in our particular case. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get an angle down through here. I'm going to put the heading on the top of the deviation bar, right? That always is my handy idea. So I put the heading on top of the deviation bar, come here, activate the approach. So now I've selected GPS and glide pass. So green is active, white is selected. Now normally right about here we'd be slowing down to 140 would be a good good speed once we're coming up. Let's see, watch this capture, see? So that you put the top of the heading, top of the, de uh, the heading on top of the deviation bar, you got a capture on that. That's coming in, you're clear for the approach. Okay, so we're cleared for the approach. We're gonna just swap those guys to the tower. We've got the tower, we've got the boxes, or you can turn those off if you don't like the boxes. I'm not a real fan of boxes. Highway in the sky boxes, but some people love them. Okay, then we're just gonna sync that again. In the G2, this syncs. And it, the heading bug, I'll keep you synced. All right, so we've got that. Then at Jabal, should, this is the other reason why I always try to remember what the glide slope intercept is at the final approach fix. It's 3100 at Jabal in this case. So this gives us a good idea. Just another little situational awareness where you're at, give you some ideas. Okay, so now we're coming up here. We're just speeding this up normally. We'd probably slow down by now. Okay, we're coming up at Jabal. Bingo. Now you can see our glide path coming down, right? So when the glide path come down, what comes down, what I always do is dot above here. When I that glide path intercepts that, I do gear down. Speed check, I always say speed check. <laughs> Gear down. We always have flaps down. In theory, you know, it doesn't show there. All right, in glide slope intercept, I put landing flaps. We gotta slow down for that. So to do landing flaps, I'm gonna bring it down to 135. There we go. Okay, tink, roll flaps. So now our VREF is way high because I don't have flaps set and so forth. There may be a way to do it, but I have no idea how to set it in here. Okay, so we're going down. Looks good. Got that set. Airspeed 140. Right, we've got that. Oops, let me come back here. Um, airspeed 140. Ice protection is required. Lights, flaps 50%. So we've got that. Okay. Landing gear down and locked. Kink. Down and locked. Flaps three, um, as required. We've got that set. Auto windshield IPS is off. Uh, two minutes before landing, autopilot off, V ref, V ref plus in. So now what I'm also going to do here is I'm going to put our missed approach altitude in. And let's say that our missed approach is going to be 180, which is very common. So I like to have that kind of all set up. Even though auto throttles and all that other good stuff in the FMS has got all that. This is a non-standard mist, so they won't do it. Right? It's not going to do it correctly. If I do it and kick it, it's going to do the wrong mist. So I've always got to be prepared for having an alternate mist. All right, so we've got that. Looks good. 
Next checklist, stress, and then that's if we have to do a grow arm. Okay, we're coming in, looks good. We're on the glide path, it's great. We're coming in here. I'm gonna come over here and uh, zoom in a little bit. We're gonna keep our speed up a little bit just because we can. So I noticed that Jabal, we were right at 3,100. It's just a nice confirmation that you have that. Um, Gugik is at whatever it says it's going to be. And 2040, it looks like. And Zuzax is 1220. I could put the chart over here, too, but I've got my checklist. Of course, if I wanted the chart, it's to show you that thing, right? I'll have to do is home and chart, bingo. So I could put that there. Lots of cool capabilities. Then normally, of course, you'd be slowing down. You go to VREF to VREF plus 10. We have our flaps up and everything. Just want to give you a good idea of how this works um, and the ease. And, of course, our, flat, our flight path um, marker in here or vector shows us exactly where we're going. We don't have winds, so we've got it nailed. We've got some traffic around us, but, yeah, IFR, they shouldn't be around. Shows our angle of attack is 0.6 on our AOA. Shows we've got 1.9 miles to the misapproach point. This is where I base uh, one of the jets I fly. So you come down through here. It's great, great representation, G3000, such a nice system. So we've got our, I mean, if when we want to go back to our checklist, of course, we just come right back here. That's our go around, so we've already, don't have to worry about that. Let's come back to our charts. Coming down, we're going down, we're going down, we're going down. Now, I'm going to slow down the speed, right? So let's go to 105 right now, just, just to slow it down, because we don't have any flaps at all. So we're just coming down, right? We're going to see, boom. Bingo, we got it. Look at that, beautiful landing. We're landing. We just see, what it, see how it lands. It lands. It's like so safe. Safe return, right? Right down on the center line. It does a great job. So thanks. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Learned a lot. I did just by teaching you um, some of the aspects of it. You know, it's a couple of things I did that I needed to watch for, right? Like that head. Once you're doing heading, go ahead and activate the next waypoint um, legs if you have an off-flight plan or, of course, vectors to final. But uh, hope you enjoyed that. I had a lot of fun showing you. And... Uh, can't wait to finish the type rating next week. Oh, also, subscribe to our channel, and we have a lot of good videos out there. More coming. Our son, T. Gray, is now uh, training with me to be a pro pilot, so he's going to have a lot of tips and tricks out there. And, of course, we have our Instagram account, personal links. So it's kind of fun. We're just having a blast. Oh, train, train, train. Well, look what happened because we ran off the end of the runway. I was talking to you, and I didn't put on my brakes. So I better come back here and make uh, airspeed zero and uh, stop that little puppy. So anyway, that was a lot of fun. Thanks for watching.